everyone and welcome to the start of another reading vlog. I just got home from work and it is so gloomy. In fact, it's so gloomy I had to stand in front of my window to have proper lighting. Let me turn on this lamp. Hold on one second. Oh my god, that did so little. So this weekend, per like all my weekends, I don't have very much planned, so I'm hoping to get a lot of reading done. And I actually am gonna be trying to do a lot of rereading this weekend. I mentioned this in my last reading vlog, but I really, really want to work on throughout this year, really, to reread some of the series I've started and really, really loved, but then never got to the next book, and then they're finishing up really soon. The past like six months, I've gotten really good about rereading series and then loving them. Them even more the second time so I want to continue on that trend especially with some of my favorite YA fantasy series I've started in the past so it's definitely the theme of this weekend but let's just jump into the books shall we use the Matilda sound she's having a, a fun time with her bowl over there but of course I wanted to show off my reading plans for this weekend I have two books on the docket both fantasy so I'm hoping to fly through both of them. The first one is a reread, very much in line with everything I've been talking about, about how I want to reread fantasy books I've loved in the past in preparation for the final book coming out. In the instance of An Ember in the Ashes, I read this, the first book, a few years ago, loved it, flew through it right when it came out, and I just haven't gotten around to the second and the third book. And I've mostly been putting off the second book, especially because I don't really remember what happened in the first one. So I figured, like, marathoning is in the future with this whole situation and if you're not familiar this is a YA fantasy series following two perspectives this fantasy novel is set in an empire that's like very 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 military centered and also very very violent I believe it's kind of supposed to be kind of like Roman-esque and they basically put down any dissension with killing people our main character keeps her head down and so does her family but when her brother is arrested for treason she basically kind of our main character stumbles into trying to resolve that situation by becoming a spy. Our other perspective is a our other perspective is the kingdom's military school's finest military student and their kind of lives and fates intertwined. I absolutely loved this book when I first read it, so I'm excited to reread it and remember everything that happened. And the other novel I really, really want to get to this month is To Kill a Kingdom, which is a siren-centered fantasy story. I hauled it this past month and it just really intrigued me because it seemed really dark and violent. And I honestly haven't read a lot of like sea fantasy so I'm hoping to get to both of these this weekend but actually a bit more about an ember in the ashes by Saba to here I'm actually taking part and partnering with penguin teen for the ember reread campaign hashtag ember reread which is basically all about a time celebrating and getting people excited about the newest book coming out a reaper at the gate by getting people to reread the first couple books in the series which has definitely been on my list and exactly what I'm doing this weekend but feel free to join in on my rereading of the series because it's gonna be great. But in honor of the new book coming out, Penguin Teen is doing a couple of really fun things, including a really awesome giveaway, which I'll have that link down below and that information, as well as a Facebook book club that has Facebook live chats for each of the books as well. So I'll link that down below, but there's gonna be one for An Ember in the Ashes as well as A Torch Against the Night. But yeah, it's gonna be so much fun. So join in with me if you want to, because it's gonna be a great time because fantasy is always the best. Clay's getting ready for our date night by napping. What are your reading plans, Clay? I'm going to read 150 pages of stuff. Proudy, what are your reading plans, Matilda? I'm going to read 150 pages of Kipples and Bits. A quick little date night OOTD. Just wearing a little swingy blouse for Madewell. Madewell jeans, cut out boots. Throwing on a coat because it's so cold outside. It's like 45 degrees and raining. What's your OOTD, Clay? It's, uh, it's, it's this. Great. Getting sushi, starting with soup, per usual. Yeah. Let me show you how to eat it. Tempura. <laughs> Yummy. Ready. And just like that, we're home, I'm in pajamas, and I'm already in bed. What time is it, Clay? 8.32. Nice. Clay and I have this thing where we go to restaurants and eat like a three-course meal in like 35 minutes. Though we did last, how long did we last at this restaurant? Like 47. 47, new record. We just, we're just like hungry people, 
and we just are like savages and we're competing against each other because like Clay eats fast, so I have to eat fast, and then I eat fast, so Clay has to eat fast because we want to make sure we get all of our bites in. But restaurants must love us because we're in and out of restaurants in like 35 minutes. <laughs> Super busy restaurant, yet we make reservations for like two weeks in advance and we get there and we're out like that. Our reservation was at 7.15. Yeah. And we probably got sat at 7.20. No, later than that because we had to wait for a reservation like 7.25. Maybe 7.25. We ate three sushi rolls, two miso soups, and we had appetizer. three courses. We had soup, a course, and then another course. And yeah, and it is 8.36. And we had to Uber and we're home. back home laying in bed. I already yeah. changed. We didn't need, we didn't need dinner. We're monsters. We mm -hmm. The moral of the story is we're monsters, but now we're gonna watch Paddington 2. I can't wait. Paddington is the greatest. I'm not, I'm, that's not even sarcastic. Like Paddington is a human, not even a human. It's, he's a bear treasure. Yeah. It's like whoever decided to make that movie, thank you. And I'm sorry for ever judging it in the past by thinking yeah. it I didn't look good. Yeah, you're unbearable. <laughs> anyway, it's time for Paddington now because Paddington's life, Paddington's love. Paddington! Paddington! <laughs> we finished Paddington, and Paddington is just the greatest thing on the planet. Paddington 2 was so good. I cried. Clay, did you cry a little bit at the end? He got a little choked, choked up at the end. <laughs> yeah. Oh. It's just like so good. It's so sweet and It's nice. so sweet and like also so well shot and the animation's so cool. It's but just the best. It's like Wes Anderson. But like. British. Like children's movie. Well, I guess yeah. Wes Anderson does children's movies. I don't know. It was awesome. Millie loved it too. Did you cry, Millie? Oh, okay. Hey, Millie. Oh, okay. I guess she wanted to lay here. <laughs> okay, well, I'm going to read now. It's time for reading, Clay. Can you move your arm? It's time to read now. Millie, you want to lay there and read with me? Are you going to read, Clay? The shizzle. All right, let's get started. Boop. Hello, good morning. I'm coming at you in full pajama realness with Millie over there. God, I just took girlfriend out for, you know, her morning, her morning walk out for her more than her morning bathroom. She's been fed, she's drinking. And I thought, uh, I'm, in the, I'm in the mood this morning to like start my reading strong. So like going right when I woke up, but I wanted to quickly update what I read last night. So I read 60 pages of Ember last night. Really, really liking it so far. Um, it's funny because it's one of those books like I've been kind of mentioning with a lot of my rereads, like I remember reading it and really liking it, but honestly, I remember so little about this book that it almost feels like I'm sort of reading it again for the first time. Like I remember the huge plot points and the huge settings, but all the little in-betweens, I'm like re-encountering almost again for the first time. So it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah. Which is one of the reasons why I love rereading so much because you can quickly fall back into the story because you already trust that you're gonna like it. But in a lot of ways, it's like reading it again for the first time if you forgot a lot of things, which is me right now. So I think I'm gonna put a record on over there and get to reading. Um, and then Clay's and I's plans today are kind of minimal. We wanna film an apartment tour today, so we need to clean, cause like, it's a little messy up in here. And then also, and then we're also gonna get dinner with our friend later in like a cooler west neighborhood. I think we're gonna go to Wicker Park, which should be a lot of fun. But in the meantime, I'm gonna put a record on and read. I, Clay disappeared. I'm hoping that means he went to go get coffee, but like I came back up from taking myself out to the bathroom and I was like, Clay? Clay? So the question is, do I do something a little more like hardcore? So like the Wonder Years new album, Sister Cities, right in the morning? Or I listen to like the Decemberists, which is a little more chill. Now nah, let's do Sister Cities. Ember in the Ashes is not like a, it's a pretty hardcore fantasy. There's already a lot of action going on and I'm already 60 pages in, so. And the record's already in here, so we can just press play. Clay got coffee. I just thought you left me forever. I was like, where did Clay go? I sent you a text. Oh. I'm a, I, don't, I'm, I don't read my text messages from you. I just ignore you all the time. Guys. I've moved to the bedroom to read, and now I'm, I'm on page 100. And I just need to like say this now because I feel like you're not gonna see me for at least five hours because I'm freaking obsessed with this book. I 
feel like I'm already liking it more than last time. Like, this book is so intense from the get-go. I mean, I remember giving it five stars when I read it last time, but like, I just feel like I'm obsessed with everyone already, again. Like, the characters, the setting, the destiny, the dual perspective, the pacing, I could be here all day. Like, my vlog is just gonna be me sitting in this bed whilst I read this book, because I'm not moving. I'm not moving. Clay's playing baseball in there, I'm listening to bleachers now, but like, holy crap. Okay, well, glad I picked this up. This always happens to me when I reread things. Like, I'm like, oh, I remember liking that. I should reread it so I can continue the rest of the series. And then I pick it up and I'm like, why? Why did I not continue sooner? <laughs> Reached part two. This is how I read. Millie's like here in this tent that I make her and she sleeps. And I read, I'm making such good progress. Oh my goodness. Um, look how cute she is. Oh, I need to stop reading soon and take a shower and like get my life together. But first, a little more snuggles with girlfriend and a little more reading with Ember in the Ashes because I'm obsessed. All right, I have to stop. I read 200 pages of this. I can't put this book down, but like I really need to take a shower. I'm not even gonna show you what I look like because I'm, I'm a mess, but like I need to shower and clean my apartment and then I will reward myself with being able to read more. I'm addicted. I'm addicted to this book. It's so good. I'm on the edge of my seat. I'm so stressed. Ah! I'm currently working on cleaning up the apartment. And you know that feeling where it's like 42 degrees outside, but you want it to be spring, so you just dress like it's spring? Because <laughs> that's me right now, wearing this cute little midi-length tiered striped dress. And I could not wear this outside, despite how sunny it is. It's 40 degrees. Survivor? and pizza for lunch. It's hot, Clay. <laughs> well, yeah, taking a little break, and then we will film on the apartment tour. I don't know if I announced that, but yeah, that's what we're filming today. Apartment tour. Just finished the apartment tour. Woo woo. Hopefully it might be up. No, it's probably not up on the channel yet, but it will be soon. So look forward to that. Now I'm back in the bedroom. Clay's about to play. What are you about to play? Madden. And I'm about to read more of An Ember in the Ashes because I'm obsessed and I want to, I just need to read more. I just need to read more. I just need to read. So I'm gonna go now, cause I need to read. Hi guys. So as I surpassed the 300 page mark of An Ember in the Ashes, I realized quite suddenly that I have not really given you any articulate thoughts about this book. I've just been going, ah, oh, I love this book. So um, let's chat about it. Let's chat about this book that I've been spending my entire Saturday reading. So, An Ember in the Ashes is the first book to a series with a third book coming out really, really soon. So I'm super pumped because obviously I'm obsessed with this one and I'm so glad I picked it up to reread, but I really have a feeling I'm gonna be like zooming through the next two because like I'm obsessed. So our main character, Leia and Elias, dual perspective story. And this is set in like a Roman Empire-esque inspired world. Clay's on his computer. He's not even reading. Um, Which is the what I would describe it as. It's basically like this king Kingdom that's ruled by an emperor and it's super violent and very military centered um, which makes me think of like Rome. Leia is a part of a group of individuals called the scholars and they were part of this land that was conquered by the marshals or the current emperor's people and um, she's her her people are persecuted and she and her family are just like trying to keep her head down but at the beginning of her story her brother is arrested for treason and she basically becomes a spy to try to get him out of prison and her task is to spy on the commander of the military school which cutting over to our other main character elias is part of he's basically part of this elite military group that basically takes kids at a super young age and trains them to be silver masks which are like brutal powerful killers and that's kind of like the root of the story there obviously they like intertwine but i mean i'm 300 pages in and they've definitely interacted with each other but they have very separate stories which i just am loving so much like you see leah kind of like come into herself but like you see her gain her own personal inner strength i mean she's going through so much and reading from her perspective is so difficult at times because it's it's she's put in such a horrible situation but you see her like overcome her own obstacles both mental as well as like literal obstacles which has been great and then obviously elias's character is really interesting because he hates the system that he's involved with like he's obviously been trained at a, as a young age to be a part of this elite military group but like he hates this group like he doesn't want to be a part of it but if he leaves 
he'll be killed. So it's like this catch-22 for both of these people. And then obviously, this book is insane because it just moves so fast. Like, it's so intense. Like, we shift perspectives to perspectives. And as you're kind of creeping along the story, they're their lives become like closer and closer and closer and I feel like when finally something happens between these two people it's just going to explode and I am already unable to put this book down. It's so intense. There's like trials, there's like political intrigue, there's like secrets, there's all sorts of twists and turns. And like I said, I've already actually read this book before, but I literally did not remember anything. I remember really liking it. I remember being dual perspective. I remember it having like a heavy military element, but in terms of like the plot, I forgot pretty much everything. So it's nice to basically encounter everything for basically what feels like the first time again. And I'm absolutely loving it. I actually feel like I'm loving it more this time. I don't know, I just feel like I have more of an appreciation for it somehow. I'm like, this book's so good, so good. Anyway, um, 300 pages in, I've read 250 pages today, so far on this Saturday. Flying through this book, should easily finish before the weekend's out. Honestly, I might even get a good chunk of the way through my second book which might also change because like I might want to pick up a torch against the night. I don't know. Like I'm like so addicted to this world right now. I'm having like a hard time focusing on anything else. But I just really wanted to update you because I just realized I was just speaking incoherent sentences to the camera about reading this book. But I never really like gave a full picture of one what it's about and two my feelings about it. But it's so good. So obviously here can write combat so freaking well and it's just such an interesting world. Like it feels Roman in like inspiration and origin but it's very much its own thing as well. Boy, anyway, I gotta keep reading. I have, how many pages do I have? I wanna say like 200, no, like 150 pages or something left. Eek. Yeah, I have like 150 pages left. So I'm just gonna keep reading before we go out to dinner tonight. Clay, are you gonna read for a little bit? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, you gonna read? Yeah. High five. Let's read together. Okay, I'm gonna go back to reading now. I'll chat with you guys later. Quick outfit of the night. We're about to go out and get some dinner with some friends. I'm wearing my favorite Topshop pants. It's the black sweater. I might just put a gray tee on actually. And then my favorite Madewell loafers. Survivor's on too. It's an intense scene. Hello, good morning. I'm about to watch not Handmaid's Tale, though I probably should watch Handmaid's Tale, but some Real Housewives of New York. I have some coffee, and I'm gonna do a face mask. Just trying to start my Sunday ultra relaxing. Millie's got her whale. Things are going great. After I do this for a little while, I'm gonna film two videos, which I'm pretty excited about as well, so. Let's get to relaxing. Oh, and then I'm to totally gonna finish A Number in the Ashes and maybe start a, start a Torch Against the Night or maybe start my original book I was planning on reading. Regardless, all three will eventually happen. <laughs> Many a hot Cheeto later and some coffee. I'm about to film. Here's the big camera. Time to get started. <sighs> I've been having the laziest Sunday possible. I'm so behind on everything in my life. <laughs> Just finished filming. Um, now I'm gonna go lay in bed and edit, I believe, TBH. To be completely honest with you, I ate way a lot of Cheetos for lunch, which I would not recommend doing. Eat a real meal. Now my stomach kind of hurts. <laughs> I'm not feeling the greatest, but I'm gonna go edit in the bedroom, and then I'm gonna read An Ember in the Ashes, because I am like obsessed with that book. I wanna finish it ASAP, and then maybe start the sequel, or maybe start To Kill a Kingdom. I don't know. It's a toss-up. I don't know what to do. I'll see how I feel after the ending because I'm, if I recall correctly, I'm pretty sure it was like an explosive ending, which, which might make me just immediately pick up a torch against the night, but we'll see. But for now, I need to edit. I'm going to make my bed, get comfy, edit, get what I need to get done. This video isn't focusing, um, but I'll check in once all of that's all situated. I'm done editing. So now it's time to read Bay. It's time to read the Bay. It's time to read Bay. Clay's not here to bother me, if you're wondering where he was. He's he's at a baseball game, and he said, Reagan, do you wanna go? And I said, no, I'm busy with Bay. Read a solid 60 pages, and I quickly went to go get some coffee, and I'm back at it. Time to put on my chill music playlist that Apple curated for me. Let's do this. 
I finished it. Clay's asleep right there. But he's just gonna have to deal because I have so many emotions. <sighs> I finished it. I finished it again. It was so good. I mean, like, I'm left with so many questions, so many concerns. I, like, love so many characters and their fates are so unknown. I have no idea what's gonna happen next. And I also feel like I have a feeling that the next couple books are gonna be, like, more magical. Like, this book had hints of, like, magical elements or magical creatures or entities or beings. But they were very much, like, hinted at and they were very much, a, like, a small part of the story. But I feel like it's only gonna escalate. But my goodness, this book was so good. <laughs> like... The speed at which it occurred was wild. Like you just were flipping the pages. It was like turn after turn after turn, like fates being entwined and like schemes being played out, plans being made and changed. It's so wild. And I also just really love how Saba Tahir did the romance. It's like not really a romance. It's like desperation and like fate. Like I actually don't know who people are gonna end up with. And while that's definitely not the main point of this book, it's definitely the adventure. It's definitely the resistance, the fighting, the hope, the like fighting for a better day, for a better purpose. Um, and that's definitely just like seeped in this novel. Like the resistance and the hope, the ember, it, the ember and the ashes that's keeping people fighting for like, for better things. It's just so present in this book and it's so good, but also the characters themselves are fantastic and the relationships are so complex and the characters' perspectives are just so interesting. They're just so dynamic because they're feeling all these things and struggling with so many things because like this world is complex. Like there is no right and wrong. Like everything is so gray. Like what is loyalty? What is the right option? There's more than one and each one has consequences. Like it's just so freaking good i just cannot right now i just can't even function as a human being i think i just need to start the sequel honestly i i need to know i need to know i need to know i'm a mess i'm a mess don't don't look at me <laughs> now that my life has been utterly obliterated by that book um i figured it's time for dinner we're actually eating a lot earlier and so it's like reaching into a drawer excuse me we're actually eating a lot earlier than we normally do on a Sunday. I feel like we've gotten in a really bad habit of eating at like 8 p.m., 9 p.m. But we both had small lunches. My lunch consisted of Cheetos, so health. Picture of health right here. So we're going to start dinner, and then I think we're going to watch a bit of Survivor, and then we're going to watch Spider-Man, because we haven't seen the new Affinity War movie yet, and everyone's not shutting up about it, and I'm scared about spoilers. We have to watch Spider-Man first, though, before we can see that. Yeah. The spoilers are endless. They're everywhere. Infinite. You know, so this is dinner tonight. Winner, winner, chicken or so dinner. It's so good. It's one of our favorites. This is like our third time making it and I always get really excited when it is popping up as an option. So good and there's so much cheese involved. Look at mozzarella, Mo mozzarella. Orzo is cooking, so is the chicken. We have some veg in the oven, you can't really see. Ooh, foggy. Now I have been snacking on all the mozzarella that I'm supposed to be putting on the zucchini later. <laughs> Dinner is ready. Zucchini, rice, chicken. Yum, yum, yum. Time to watch Spider-Man. Spider-Man. Food. Hi, everyone. We just finished watching Spider-Man, and I thought it might be good to tell you our thoughts. Um, I really like Spider-Man. Yeah. It was <laughs> really good. The best thing about it was... It's kind of old school in a way. Yeah, it was like an old school, like early 2000s superhero movie in the sense that Marvel has done an amazing job and it's been incredible. Yeah. But they have to up the ante. Every time. And... So like it's either, it's world destruction every movie, yeah, you know? Yeah, so... Or um, like a global war every movie. Yeah, because why would you care about if... A couple people are gonna die in the last movie. And it's like everyone's so powerful. I mean, you have like gods, like literally mm -hmm. like Thor, or the Hulk, and then mm -hmm. Iron Man, obviously. So like Spider-Man's like a classic origin story in the way that this is literally just a kid, like just trying to like help out his neighborhood, you mm -hmm. know? Like trying to stop 
a bad guy that's like bad, yeah. but not so bad that all the other Avengers haven't really paid attention to him. Yeah, and the battles don't have to be galactic for you still. Yeah, to it's you're like still it's just you still as care. invested. Yeah, you know. And so. I also just like that everyone was young, and I like yeah. that everyone was actually young, like all the actors and the settings. I just yeah. thought was like really nice. And I also did academic decathlon in high school, so I was like represent. But yeah, really, really liked it. Now we're back in the bedroom. And I'm gonna read. I've decided to just go full on be trash. I'm just gonna be trash and read a torch again tonight. Because I'm addicted. I read An Ember in the Ashes in one day. And now I need to know what happens next. So I'm just gonna start the sequel. What about you, Clay? Are you gonna read? Yep. So, Scythe, how many pages are you gonna try to read? I think I said 150 for the weekend, and I'm not gonna hit that goal, but I think <laughs> I can maybe reach. 50? No, I'm I'm almost to 50. I'd say 75 to 100. I'm at like 50 pages like right now. Right now, that's probably a good goal. Yeah, it's 9:35. Yeah, Let's we see got where time. We, we got time. We Maybe got you time. can even read 100, Clay. Ooh. Ooh. Okay. How do we get to reading? I need to know what happens next. Got to read them all. That's my goal. Hi everyone, it's the next day. Excuse my appearance. Um, it started raining on the way home and now my hair looks like this. But I wanted to do the customary next day end to the vlog and go over everything I read for this weekend. I actually had an amazing reading weekend. Millie. Um, not only because I read a bunch, I read like almost 600 pages this weekend, which I'm super happy with, but I'm also like full tilt obsessed with what I'm currently reading, which is always just a fantastic feeling. 2018 has been a great reading year for me. Excuse the Matilda toys noises in the background. Clay is playing with her. But before I also jump into the books I read this weekend, because they both were, spoiler alert, part of the um, Sabatier series, I finished and started uh, the first and second book. Um, but before I jump into the specifics, I did just want to let you know that all information about the hashtag Ember Reread campaign will be down below if you're interested in finding out more. I'm definitely participating because I'm about to finish Torch Against the Night probably in like two days and then eagerly await the release of A Reaper at the Gate. So to recap, I started and completed the entire uh, first novel in Ember in the Ashes. Loved it, trash for it, loved every single second of it, page after page, five out of five stars. Loved it even more than the first time I read it. Everything about it was incredible, action packed, the setting, the characters, the twists, the turns. Honestly, couldn't ask for more amazing and then after i finished that i immediately picked up a torch against the night because i could not not read this book after how the first one ended it just would have been a crime so i ended up being able to read 100 pages of this which i'm pretty happy with and oh gosh it's already like going so fast and it's already like killing my emotions so definitely eager to see how i'll survive the second book but yeah, that's everything I read this weekend. Hopefully you guys enjoyed this reading vlog and I'll see you guys soon with another one soon. Goodbye.